time and time again, you see good old Thomas talking about apple cider vinegar. You hear me touting about how it's the best thing that you can possibly have, how it's the best thing since sliced bread. But what is it about apple cider vinegar that really makes it so great? Well, in this video, I want to break down not just apple cider vinegar, I want to break down some of the other vinegars too. And in this case, particularly coconut vinegar. There have been a lot of people that have been asking me recently, what is so great about apple cider vinegar? Why can't we go with some of these other vinegars? So let's get into the science, let's get into the common denominators, and let's also talk about the differences and what might be best for you when you're on a ketogenic diet, on a fasting diet, or you're just going through life trying to get healthier. So let's talk about that common denominator for a second. Let's talk about that main constituent, which is, of course, acetic acid. I'm going to talk about the difference between apple cider vinegar and coconut vinegar when it comes down to acetic acid, and it'll all start to make sense. You see, when it comes down to apple cider vinegar, how we get to that acetic acid is simply by taking the juice and sort of mushed up apples, combining them with bacteria until it ultimately forms an alcohol, and then fermenting that alcohol even further until it forms acetic acid. Well, to make it a little bit more sensible for you, Coconut vinegar is created the same way, except instead of using mashed up apples, we're using coconut sap. So the same exact process leading to the exact same compound, just a different strategy of getting there in terms of the actual root. Now, acetic acid is really, really important when it comes down to fatty acid metabolism. One of the main things that people talk about when it comes down to apple cider vinegar is its ability to help you burn fat. Well, let's talk about how that works. You see, this acetic acid does something to fatty acid upregulation. Whenever we consume dietary fats, our bodies start to break them down into triglycerides, and then they recompose them into fatty acids that are utilized for fuel. Well, if we increase the upregulation of fatty acid oxidation, that means that we are actually increasing how many fatty acid molecules are utilized for energy, thereby increasing our metabolism. Now, the other thing that we have to look at is how it actually affects genes in our body. You see, acetic acid actually turns on genetic mechanisms within our body that program the body to start utilizing more fatty acids. So it's not just doing it from a metabolic sense, it's actually doing it from a genetic sense as well, which leads you to argue that it could actually change how your body metabolizes food long term if you use things like apple cider vinegar or coconut vinegar over the long haul. The other thing we want to look at is the unique utilization of something called uncoupling protein 2. What uncoupling protein 2 is, is the body's ability to utilize fatty acids to increase body temperature. And if we increase these levels of uncoupling protein 2, we increase thermogenesis with each given fatty acid that is oxidized. What that means is that you are going to elicit more of a thermogenic response burning each and every fatty acid molecule when you have acetic acid in the equation, thereby increasing your metabolism, increasing that fire within the body. The next thing that we have to look at with acetic acid is how it affects the glycemic index, how it affects the glycemic load of a given starch. See, whenever we consume carbohydrates, we have things in our body that start to break them down into glucose. And then these glucose molecules have to ride on certain chains and certain transport mechanisms to get throughout the rest of the body. Well, one thing that acetic acid does that is pretty darn cool is it limits those numbers of glucose transporters. So you have less available Ubers, in a sense, to pick up these glucose molecules and drive them around the body. Therefore, you have more carbohydrates that are just sticking in the gut, getting digested and metabolized and pushed out through the body versus glucose molecules that are getting delivered to different cells in the body, ultimately or potentially getting stored as fat. So those are the big things with acetic acid. So what are the main differences between coconut vinegar and apple cider vinegar if acetic acid as that common denominator is the same thing? Well, the first one we want to look at is the mother. Okay, you hear people talk about the mother all the time. Whenever you get apple cider vinegar, you want to get the one that says it has the mother. Well, the thing is, the mother is a web-like structure of different proteins and amino acids and ultimately bacteria that create this structure that gives us a lot of overall gut health and immune health. Apple cider vinegar has a lot more quality when it comes down to the mother than coconut vinegar does. But this is where things get a little bit confusing. Because of that, people tend to think that apple cider vinegar by default is significantly better. But in reality, it's just better for general health. It's not necessarily the end all be all if you're doing keto or if you're fasting. So let's talk about some of the differences. Most of the differences have to come with mineral content. When we look at coconut vinegar, we have to remember that coconut trees are usually growing in very, very nutrient rich areas. They're close to the ocean and they end up having a lot of minerals in the soil simply because it's coming from lava rock. Usually very nutrient rich soil that has a lot of phosphorus, a lot of iron, a lot of magnesium, a lot of potassium, and actually a lot of sodium as well. For example, if we take a look at what a liter of coconut vinegar has in the way of potassium versus a liter of apple cider vinegar, there's 10,300 milligrams of potassium in one liter of coconut vinegar. There's 90 milligrams of potassium in one liter of apple cider vinegar. 
So you see, we have to weigh out all these different things. And if you're on a low carb diet or you're fasting, your body is excreting minerals like crazy. So it's extremely, extremely imperative that you're getting these minerals in one way or the other. If we have a lot of potassium, we're able to draw water into the cell. Thereby, the cell is able to be balanced. We have that proper sodium potassium balance with those pumps. The sodium is going to draw the water out of the cell, potassium is going to draw it back in. Very, very critical to having energy when you're fasting, when you're on a keto diet. So you're probably wondering at this point, which one is better? You're always talking about apple cider vinegar, but now you're saying that coconut vinegar is better. Well, here's the end all be all. They're both tremendous. They both have amazing, amazing attributes when it comes down to assisting you in digesting and assisting the ability to uptake minerals. But if you are someone that is finding that you're extremely fatigued when you're on a keto diet, you're extremely fatigued when you're fasting, you may want to give coconut vinegar a try and see if you have improvement over using apple cider vinegar. If you do see improvement by utilizing coconut vinegar, it's a very telltale sign that you've been mineral deficient and you can combat that same issue by just adding some extra salt to your diet or adding some extra salt to your water throughout the course of the day. So I like to use coconut vinegar as sort of my litmus test. If I have more energy when I use coconut vinegar, I know that I have a mineral imbalance. If I feel the same when I use coconut vinegar as when I use apple cider vinegar, I know that the fatigue is probably resulting from something else. But the end all be all for you to know on this is if you're trying to get more digestive health and you're trying to get overall balance and more bacteria from the mother, apple cider vinegar is the way to go. If you're trying to get more of a mineral balance, then of course the coconut vinegar is the way to go. And as always, if you have ideas for future videos or if you have anything that you want to see in the future, make sure you hit those comments below and let me know. My team and I always look through those to get good ideas of what we can bring to you to keep you locked in here on my channel. See you soon.